by its very nature, Invasion of the Body Snatchers should have knockoffs. I mean, it, it's a film about aliens that create duplicates that are similar and yet missing something. And it's a formula that's been copied to death, and I figured it'd be a good time to highlight some of them. And check out some pod people kind of movies. And if you haven't subscribed or liked yet, uh, then you're next. You're next. Number 10. We're starting off this list with perhaps the most well-known of the bunch, and it's The Faculty from 1998. This has a T-1000, Ursher, and an alpha dog, and, and something unseen attacks the coach. Then there's Lilith and Carrie's mom, and coach attacks the principal and seems different, although so does Mrs. Olsen. But then there's also Laurie Strode's kid, Wilfred's owner, Mia Toretto, a ghost of Mars, Daisy Adair, this guy who I hope is having a really bad time in jail, Satanico Pandemonium, and geez, another sex pest. And who else is in this thing? Oh, holy crap, Jon Stewart and Jean Grey? And is this whole review here just going to be like me listing all of the people in this? We get a view into the high schoolers' lives. Uh, Stan wants to quit sports to the chagrin of his popular girlfriend. Zeke is the local drug dealer. Mary Beth is the naive new girl. Casey is the picked on nerd. And Stokes is the outcast that everyone thinks is gay. Now, Here's where the body snatcher stuff starts to come into play. They find a weird creature that reacts to water and then discover that members of the faculty have been taken over by aliens and they're working their way through the staff to integrate and take over. And this one came out in the wake of Scream's success and had some aesthetic similarities to that one. And of course, the massive cast of known actors and was even written by Kevin Williamson. It was directed by Robert Rodriguez, although I will say that it really, really doesn't feel like one of his films from a stylistic level. Like the original version of the script wasn't by Williamson and was instead by David Wechter and Bruce Kimmel and circulated for years before Scream Success got it greenlit. And Williamson was brought in to do rewrites and hip it up. He was even meant to direct this one, but instead went with teaching Miss Tingle and Rodriguez came in to handle it. And this may be the highest profile entry on this, but it's also the least body snatchers, even if it's still, um, it's still body snatchers. Like, they actually discuss pod people and discuss the similarities and suggest that Jack Finney's book was possibly inspired by a previous real invasion. So, quite a bit was taken from that. Although there's also a healthy helping of the thing in there for good measure. But it, it's a ton of fun, even if it feels like highly derivative and very uneven. Number nine. In that same year, 1998, there was another clone simply called The Lake. And this one was a TV movie made for NBC. It has Jenna Reed taking some time away from the Dream Come True Foundation. And she's a nurse and gets a phone call that her father is ill and has to go home. On her way, a man runs in front of her car, and the police show up and take him away. She meets up with an old flame, and it's Johnny Cage, and he's a doctor. When she goes home, she's greeted by Grandpa Fred, who's no longer a vampire, and Mrs. Cunningham. Her and her dad have a very strained relationship, but when she starts talking to people around town, she notices some odd shifts in personalities. She even runs into the guy that she hit, and he's perfectly okay now. And then she runs into a little kid, and, and, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the walker told him that he had AIDS. Walker told me I have AIDS. It seems there's also a local group that are keeping tabs on her and talking about getting rid of her, and when her dad makes a sudden and miraculous recovery, she gets confused because the sonogram is in reverse, and he's suddenly much kinder and consider it. That night, they take her out into the lake and push him into the water, and he shows back up, and is also showing a divergence in behavior. Soon enough, people start noticing that their loved ones are acting differently, much like in Body Snatchers, and Maggie even discovers her own double before being laked. And yes, clearly a heaping helping of Body Snatchers going on here, and our director is David Jackson, a man very deeply entrenched in the TV world. In fact, 
Out of his 73 entries under his directorial filmography, there were only two that didn't say TV movie or TV series next to it. And I looked and both of those debuted on TV as well. So this is a TV director all the way. One of the writers was J.D. Feigelson, and he's also well known for films on the small screen and is the man who wrote Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. And it looks like the screenplay was based on a book that he wrote, but I can't really find what that book was. It's very inspired by the Snatchers, although the way that the aliens come about is uh, pretty different, obviously, since it's not pods. But the influence is overwhelming here, just translated into TV movie budget logistics. Number eight. Here's one that's more recent, and we're going to check out 2021's The Changed. And the Candyman is here, and he lives next to Kim and Mac, and they've been noticing that people around them seem to be acting different. People keep telling them that they don't need to be angry anymore or worried anymore, and it seems like something is going on as the governor declares a state of emergency. There's also a local high school girl named Kim who notices it too, and phones are down, along with the TV signal. A radio broadcast says that people are not the same anymore, and they've been replaced, and they have infiltrated the government and military, and people keep on trying to kiss them. Things are ramped up when they realize that Bill has been changed, and they tie him up and try to interrogate him. They realize that the kiss is the catalyst, and it leads to some tension as they try to keep the change out while talking to Bill and figuring out what's going on. And yeah, I mean, this is basically Body Snatchers, but a little further into the invasion. This could almost work as a sequel, as it's after the aliens had taken over uh, a lot more of the population, and the insinuation is that unchanged humans are far more in the minority at this point. It's from Michael Mangillo, and he's done a few films, and, and most are sort of sci-fi inspired. And the inspiration for this one didn't go unnoticed, since so many of the reviews and articles about it mention body snatchers in them. But it, it does try to go a bit deeper, for the most part, since it's a, a low-budget picture, and, and there, there's a good deal of the runtime kept to the one location and more conversation than acting. But the problem is... Uh, that th th doesn't seem to be much threat. The aliens aren't all that aggressive. And what with this coming out in 2021, there appears to be some sort of COVID-related political messaging going on here. But it's all so vague and unclear. It's pretty impossible to figure out what they're trying to get at, even if you can kind of guess what they wanted to do. I, I, I get the feeling that they really wanted to come right out and say something, but also didn't want to be controversial, so they tried to sugarcoat it with vague comments about waking up the people. Plus, get ready for the most anticlimactic ending of recent history. Number seven. This next one is from 2020, and it's another TV movie with Crawlers, which takes place on St. Patrick's Day and a college town that's having a massive crazy party. A police officer finds a man passed out in the middle of the street with most of his clothes gone, and he takes a bite out of him, but they expressly state that these are not zombies. We meet Misty, and she's had a bit of a falling out with her old friend Chloe, and when they and a couple of other friends meet up at a bar, some odd things start to happen. And when Chloe goes off with a guy, and things seem shifty, Misty teams up with her drug-dealing friend Shauna to find her. When they go to the local frat house, they find pervy Aaron, who they just saw with Chloe, but he claims that he's been tied to a bed for hours, and a woman bit him on the leg and duplicated him. The group then pair up to figure out what's going on and who has already been converted, and it seems like Shauna's mom knows about them and says that they first arrived on a meteor back on March 17th, 1978, so still St. Patrick's Day, but I have to wonder if the 78 was a reference to the Philip Coffin Body Snatchers remake. And this one certainly takes a different approach to the source, but it still feels very derivative, but it just feels like everything is on a much smaller scale. It's, it's hard to feel like this is a far-reaching invasion 
when there's rarely more than four people around. And that whole aspect of who can you trust never really seems to kick in, with the exception of like one scene. And I have to say, it, it all feels a bit like been there, done that. And I said that this was another TV movie, and this was another episode of the Hulu series called Into the Dark, which put out a feature film every month that tied into a holiday taking place in the month the film was released. Clearly, this was put out in March, timed up around St. Patrick's Day, and the holiday does come into play as the storyline revolves around a pub crawl. It was directed by Brandon Zuck and was his feature debut, and was the sixth episode of the second season, and it's fun enough, but doesn't really do much different with the whole concept. And in fact, it uh, feels like it does less than the other films with the general idea. Number six. This next one is a bit more of a broad strokes kind of ripoff, and it's 2014's Honeymoon. It has Egret and Doc Frankenstein, and they've just gotten married and are headed up into the woods to a cabin for their honeymoon. It's remote, and there's not many other people around, and at first, things are pretty awesome. But, on their first night there, a mysterious light shines in their window, and then they meet the guy who runs the nearby restaurant, who B used to know when they were younger. He's acting really strange, and seems to have some abusive tension with his wife, Annie. That night, though, Paul finds B out in the woods, naked and confused, although she claims that she was just sleepwalking. After that, her behavior is off, and she's not quite the girl that he married, and it becomes more and more apparent as the days roll on. And this one was by Lee Janiak, and it was her directorial debut, and it was done on a pretty low budget. It's more of a slow burn movie, and way more personal view on the concept than any of the other efforts here, since there's really only four people in this entire movie. Instead of the aliens taking over society and the protagonist noticing changes in the people around them, it instead becomes a more personal tale. And instead of being about paranoia or conformity or any of those other metaphors that these movies tend to go towards, this instead feels like a commentary about marriage and how relationships change. But at its heart, it's still a body snatcher riff and it's about people being swapped out for exact duplicates, and other people noticing that their loved ones just don't quite seem like their loved ones anymore. It got some mixed reviews and a small art house theater run, but didn't set the world on fire. And even though this is a very different feeling movie, Chaniac would go on to direct the Fear Street trilogy, a much quicker paced and campier set of films than this one. Number five. We're staying on the highbrow range of things and headed to Japan for 2017's Before We Vanish. It begins with a family being horribly killed and a young girl responsible, and she then wanders out into the street causing a big car crash. There's another man named Shinji, and his wife is worried because he's not acting the same and she no longer recognizes him. There's also a young man who reaches out to a reporter and asks him to be his guide, and also acts rather strange. Jinji appears to have extraordinary abilities, as does Amino, and his parents are essentially vegetables. He reveals to Sakurai that he's an alien, and that he and his compatriots are on Earth and looking for concepts that they can take home. The only problem is, is that when they take those concepts from a person's mind, the people can no longer remember them, and the concept he took from Amino's parents is freedom. He says their race is planning to invade Earth, and they need guides who they promise not to take ideas from. Oddly, they occasionally improve things this way, and Shinji seems to be a better husband, and a young man who has the word possession taken from him feels freed from materialism. Now, this one diverges quite a bit from the general concept, since the aliens are staying with the three people and not replacing them en masse, but I put it on here since it's an alien invasion in which they're replacing human beings and their loved ones are alarmed by their change in personality. So it's very clear that there was a starting point of body snatchers, but then things are taken in a very different direction and were mainly given the story from the alien's perspective. The other reason that I'm putting this one on here is this by Kiyoshi Kurosawa, and he directed one of my all-time favorite J-horror flicks, Pulse. 
This movie is very sharply contrasted from that one in that there's not this overwhelming sense of dread, but they both involve a slow and stealthy invasion and the decaying normalcy of everything. And this is really good. It's got great character work and an interesting twist on an old concept with one hell of an emotional punch in the finale. Number four. This next one is interesting because it's a bit of a case of who's ripping off who, since we're looking at 1994's The Puppet Masters. It kicks off with some alien looking activity and Munch is here and they call in Agent Nivens at the behest of a man who knows a thing or two about body snatchers. A couple of local kids have turned the crash site into a sort of sideshow and are acting very ominously. And they feel as if there's some sort of cover up going on. They soon discover that the local TV station manager is not what he seems. And when they kill him, an alien creature erupts from his back, which they capture. There's another guy here who knows a thing or two about aliens looking like people he knows, and they realize that the little creature can attach to a human spinal column and take control of them like puppets, and could have taken over the whole town by that point, and has even already infiltrated their ranks. So yeah, I, I think it's pretty easy to see how this can be seen as a take on body snatchers. It's aliens that are infiltrating our society and becoming us so that you can't tell who is still human and who is an alien. And here's the thing. Pretty easy to say that this is a Body Snatchers knockoff, especially considering that it came out one year after Abel Ferrara's remake, or third part or whatever, of Body Snatchers. The concept is similar, and they even cast Sutherland as a sort of a wink to the audience. Plus, when the creatures are making themselves known, they do the whole open mouth bit. But, it was actually based on a book, and that book was called The Puppet Masters, and was written by Robert Heinlein, the man who also gave us Starship Troopers, and it came out in 1951. The Invasion of the Body Snatchers was based on a book from Jack Finney, and that came out in 1954, and many people have commented on how it seemed to steal concepts from The Puppet Masters. Because of that, you could sort of see this movie as being the real deal. The OG. And Body Snatcher movies are simply ripoffs of it. But truth to tell, it seems like it's a little column A, a little column B. And it, it's a pretty solid good time. Sure, it feels a little old hat, and most of the stuff that it's bringing up is stuff that the Body Snatcher movies already did. But it's also bringing some new things to the table that are interesting like the psychological and physical side effects that people feel after the alien has been removed from them. And it's a, a very enjoyable watch. Number three. Okay, things are about to get a touch more blatant here since this next one is from 2007 and it's just called Invasion of the Pod People and it's from The Asylum. So yeah, you know this is a ripoff. We're in Hollywood and one night there's a freak meteor shower. Melissa here is in a very competitive agency trying to book this new model slash actress, and wow, check out this sound quality. Hey. Bailey Rogers stopped by. She wanted me to bring you this? What is it? I don't know. Some sort of feng shui thing? Yeah, is that it? Um and yeah, clearly production values for the asylum were lower in 07 than they would come to be. A woman delivers her a strange plant that looks like someone just bought a ginger root and put it in a pot, and the actress takes it home, and it creates a duplicate of her that attacks and kills her. Melissa has a guy friend that's a bit of standoffish, and that night a man breaks into her place with a gun and tells her that people are after her, and they can look like anyone, and then kills himself. But then she sees him on the street the next day perfectly fine. Other members of her office end up replaced, and she starts to notice their change in attitude. And Melissa then gets drawn into a dark world of sex and potted plants. And yes, this is very, very clearly a straight-up ripoff of Body Snatchers, just with more sex and nudity. And what's funny is that it seems like that, that wasn't even intentional. Like The original version was meant to be rated PG-13, but after submitting it to the MPAA, it only received an R rating, so they just went the other direction. And instead of cutting it down 
to get that PG-13, they added more violence and nudity. You know what they didn't cut down as well? The sound of a crew member coughing. Hey Casey, can you see if the print runs from me? I thought I have to run an errand. You know, I don't... But then you hear it again, and, and I guess that that's just their background office sound effect? Because you can hear this cough several more times, and they're meant to be the only people in the office. So what's the deal with this? And like I said, this is from the asylum, and they built their whole company around mockbusters of more famous films. And they released this to compete with The Invasion, a big budget remake of Body Snatchers with Nicole Kidman. It was directed by Justin Jones, and he's only done a handful of films as a director, but has a huge career as a second unit or assistant director. What's interesting too is that the lead actress, Erica Kessler, had been in a handful of low budget films, but, but I guess that this one was the last straw because she quit acting after this. But a few years later, got into the producing game and was a producer on The Amazing Race, and then later married at first sight. And it's uh, not good. I, I don't really expect much from Asylum films, but this is shoddier than usual and a little on the dull side, but it's definitely one of the biggest knockoffs on this list. Number two. This next one goes all the way back to 1992, the earliest film on this list, and it's Seed People. It begins with Mr. Tom Baines here, and he's trying to warn the authorities about a coming danger, and a member of Homeland Security arrives, and the story is told in flashback. Sam tells of his small town, which is only accessible by bridge, and it was closed for repairs for three days. Tom is staying in a bed and breakfast run by an old flame, and sure enough, people in the town are saying that family and friends aren't themselves anymore. There's been talks of meteorites around town, and a guy checks out a weird flower and pokes it with a stick, and wh why do I feel like I should censor this for some reason? Well, it slimes him, and he mutates into this creature here, which then becomes an exact duplicate of him. Little Kimmy is then attacked by what appears to be Sigmund the Sea Monster, and let's face it, who's ever heard of a friendly sea monster? What in the ding-dong heck of a doodle hell is that? And soon enough, other people are taken over, and Rabbit appears as well. And pretty soon, Tom doesn't know who to trust, and these goofy little buggers just keep on showing up. And this one is from Full Moon, and this was released around the height of their popularity, even if it never got the notoriety that the other releases from this time frame did. It was directed by Peter Mnugian, who had also done the first Demonic Toys movie, and Arena, and several other films for Full Moon. And this is pretty much just Body Snatchers. Note for note, the storyline feels like a carbon copy, except for the inclusion of those creature effects. And those guys, as silly as they look, are absolutely awesome. Like, clearly, this was Full Moon, so they had to work in a way to have little monsters involved. And these were by none other than John Carl Beekler. And this one's pretty fun, even if it's all a little too familiar at times, even coming down to like trying to blend in by not showing any emotion. Number one. Our final movie for this list is from 2019, and it's called Assimilate, which begins with a young woman in a house who is attacked by a nude woman that she's shocked to see. It's set in a small town in Missouri, and these two guys are planning on making a documentary about what life is like there. There's a new internet facility there, and they notice that there's these new little bugs everywhere. Zach has a crush on Kayla, and that night they find a woman in her house hiding from some sort of creature, and it's bitten her. They think that the local church is involved, and find out a bunch of people are meeting there, and when they go to talk to Ms. Bissett, she says that nothing happened. After doing a little more snooping, they realize that people around town are acting strange and not like themselves, and he finds Kayla's mom in a hamper, but she's also fine. And you may be wondering what's going on here, but then again, uh, you're not, unless you haven't seen Body Snatchers. But if you have, you know precisely what's going on here. And this one is by John Murlowski, and he's directed 
quite a few horror and horror related flicks and even did one of the OG Amityvilles with A New Generation. But the rest of his filmography is pretty family friendly stuff and Lifetime movies. And of course, he also did Santa with Muscles, which is a whole genre of its own. It, it sort of does its own thing here since there's no pods and instead the clone has to bite you and obtain your DNA before it can replicate you. But it's said to be an adaptation of the original Body Snatchers novel, even if it's not credited as such. And, and you know what? All around, this is a pretty solid little film. It, it, its biggest sin is that it's basically a Body Snatchers remake that's not called a Body Snatchers remake. So it just feels derivative. Like they even do the big mouth call when they find humans. But I was watching this as a take on the book and I thought it did it all pretty well. So there you have it, 10 movies that are sort of doing a whole take on the body snatcher thing of replacing human beings with an exact duplicate and their friends and families like noticing that something is slightly off with them. Um, and yeah, this was a really fun bunch of movies. I liked almost all of these. There's one or two that were a little eh, but for the most part, this was a really, really good watch through. So I guess I like body snatchers clones. So, you know, whatever. Um, if you enjoy these as well, uh, let me know down in the comments if you've seen some of these. Let me know which one of these you now would like to see. Put that in the comments down below. If you liked this video, hit that like button. If you enjoy the channel, subscribe to it and hit the bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. And also check out my Patreon page and help support this channel and keep it going. I appreciate that. These guys are awesome for doing that. And I'll see you all very, very soon for another great video. Bye-bye.